this misdirection tortures me like a victim of supreme depression. So we're back with a living legend in this town of uh, shenanigans, New York, Mr. Brooklyn himself. Uh, you could be Mr. Brooklyn, right? Yeah, should possibly. Be. You should be. Yeah, they, I was born in St. Peter's Hospital, and it's now called the Cobble Hill Nursing Home. Oh, really? They're eagerly awaiting my return. <laughs> ashes to ashes, we all fall down. You, you think you'll go into a nursing home? Fuck that, I'll be dead before exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. Because, do you, what do you think about Saturday? We're having a party Saturday, you're all invited. Woo! We're having a barbecue over in Bushwick, we got pork shoulders, we got, oh. we got crawfish, we got... The rapture. We got, we got sausages, we got wings, we got all sorts of... If Jesus is coming, we got pork. <laughs> no, we got pork and shellfish. Wait Come on minute, down. Wait a minute. Did, did Jesus not eat pork? Jesus no, he did not. He's a Jewish man. Yeah, but just because you're Jewish doesn't mean that yes. you eat that. We're going to have oh, cheeseburgers. No, Fuck you. Jewish people do not eat pork. It's been there for he like... Was? We're going to hell in a bucket, but at least she we're enjoying she's the ride. Kosher. I just, she, was, it, was kosher even invented back in the days? Of oh, kosher? yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. The way to keep them in control and control the taxes. Exactly. So exactly. they just, they just. You got to buy our food, not theirs. Exactly. Wait, so they would just like, wait, what's that when you kill They them? made up rules. You know, I firmly believe that whoever translated the Bible for the Jews was, um, did not like them. Said, you don't understand what this means? Oh, I, I feed this fluently. Yeah, uh, you got to shave your wife's Sacrifice, head. Sacrifice, that's the one. You have to shave your wife's head. Yeah, she has to look like shit. All right, you have to have sex through a sheet. Yeah, no, not that. You can't touch money on Friday. What, that's our busiest day. Book says you can't do it. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Whoever, whoever translated the book for them didn't like it and said, you don't read this? You don't understand this? Oh, I, I'm fluent. Frank is totally right. I'm fluent. So, in today's... Um, world, who would you think is the person doing that today? What? The government. Doing what? Making rules like that, telling you you can't do this, you can't do that. You can't do this, you can't do that. Bloomberg! Okay. Yes. So Bloomberg. Yeah, the different, you know, Giuliani just enforced the laws that were set up. Bloomberg made new rules. Yeah. That's right. You can't smoke, you can't do this, you can't do that. Fuck you! You know what I mean? I mean life is not here. a ride. Life is not a ride where you park nice and safe in your appointed spot. Life should be coming to an end. It's spinning around the curve. Wait a minute. The wheels Please. flashing, the tires burning, smoke crashing, engine flying, a 360 into the spot going, wow. And what a ride. Right. That's right. So, so, so how do we make the rapture just go to Bloomberg's house? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, uh, no, the raptures only, uh, according to these guys who can't do math and it's fucked up before, uh, it's only for the good people, and then the rest of us are going to be stuck here until October. So, in other oh, words, is that the next rapture? No, that's the end of the world. It's in October? How come this date keeps changing? We got five months of suffering. No, the, rapture, the rapture is where he, uh, basically, Kim said it pretty good. He goes, so accordingly, according to what these people are saying, uh, you know, for the next six months, is going to be headaches and pain and suffering. Like it's, it's been like that last five years. Just like, 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 just like every other fucking day. It's like New York City. Sounds like Passover. Sounds like every other fucking day. It sounds like Tuesday to me. It sounds like Tuesday. Sounds like every other day, putting up with shit and fires and war and pestilence. Yeah, we've we been doing that already. All right, well, enough. Of all this shenanigans. Yeah. Why are you here? Today? Why am I here? Because I love you. Aww. <laughs> but uh, we all got right, a special show. Now. We got a special show tomorrow. A good friend of ours, Susie Creechy, who's a Palermo. Uh, she was in a band called Cheap Perfume, one of the one of the first all girl punk rock bands. Awesome band. She used to go out with one of the boys from her and Bunny. We're waitresses at CBGB's, and they went out with some of the guys. CBGB's. This was like a anyway, bracelet that, like, for to that, be able to drink. That was like a cock this ring like for me. This is like a real one. No, this is a real one. Yeah, but that's not only big enough for a cock ring for me. I, I saved that for some reason. Right. Anyway, so uh, they worked there. They went out with the guys at the Tough Darts, and uh, they got together. They broke up, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Susie's a good friend of ours. And right before Christmas, she had a big headache, went to the hospital. They found a tumor. Yeah, but you know how it came? I know. I, I was talking to her fiance um, at Bobby Steele's wedding. Yeah. The, her tumor came from 
talking on a cell phone. That's debatable. That's what he said. That's the rumors. 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 She did more than she, than she should be in her fucking fingers because she texted so much. No, he said <laughs> she, she was alive, and everything. Like, everything's like gonna kill you. I mean, you know, cancer's like shit. It happens. You know what I mean? Fucking Steve, uh, Christopher Reeves, the guy whose wife didn't smoke or anything, she died of cancer. Yeah. Peter Jennings yeah. didn't smoke for 20 years, he died of cancer. But it's Shit, I could have kept smoking for fucking 20 years, and I would have been happy and still died. Exactly. What the fuck? You yeah. ain't stopping it. Anyway, well, they found this tumor, they brought it to Germany. It's a brain for some, tumor. A brain tumor, they, they brought it to Germany for some special doctors that do stuff over there they can't do here, one of the top people around. And, uh, and they couldn't help it, so they brought her back. She was out on side doing the chemo, and now they recently moved her over to hospice. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, like, hospice, as you know, my mother was a hospice nurse. Uh, that's your last stop. There's yeah. no getting out. I, I just thought my mother was a bad nurse, and the patients kept dying. You know what I mean? She used to have to check the obituary before she went into work to see if she had to. But, uh... But Susie's in hospice, and we're going to broadcast the show live, and it's going to be, basically, it's like a show from 1979 all over again. We've got the shirts are going to be playing tomorrow night. we got Buddy Love. we got the Tough Darts going to make it. The Tough Darts were on the first CBGB album with two, with two songs. It's all for the love of rock and roll, and your love is like a nuclear waste. Harley Fine from the Tough Dark is going to be there. He's got some special guests. Freddie Barbata, who's played with the Turtles and the Jefferson Airplane and the Starship. Ellen Foley. You know what I mean? Buddy Love is going to be there. Now we're even. The Hudson Duster, Dirty and Naughty, Low Society, Marnie Rice, uh, Joff Wilson. It's I know Joey, the Joey Memorial is there tomorrow, but you know what? They'll have another one of those next year. <laughs> Susie's here now. All right, and we want to make sure that we want Susie to see because like every time anybody goes by the hospital with a guitar or something, and Susie just lights up. So I want her lit up. I want that whole fucking hospital to be lit up with Susie's glow because we're gonna broadcast the show live to her. It's a beautiful thing. Right? It's only five dollars. Fuck twenty five dollars from Joey. Thing. Sorry, sorry, Mickey and Joey, but uh, you, know, you have enough money. Well, you guys, you know, this is not really you know, the, the insurance is screwed. Of course, she's a musician. What else? You know what I mean? But uh, it's not going to be much. You know what I mean? It's only five dollars a head. But it's have you been to the hospital to see her? Uh, I'm not good at hospices. You know what I mean? I just look at the, like, I just wait for somebody to drop and I'll say, I'll clean up the meds. It's okay. like, I'll get rid of those for you. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to be going up there next week with Joe. Good. All right, but... Uh, she was an gonna, amazing musician. Amazing musician, great bass player, guitar player. And uh, yeah, come on out. It's a good show. We're going to be broadcasting it live over at nyclivrock.com. As a matter of fact, we're even going to be able to interview and talk back and forth with her. You know so she's I mean? talking? Yeah, well, she'll be typing. You know, we'll have somebody there. Steve Aloysius will be up there. He'll be taking care of, like, the typing. She, you know, she, uh, she talked to me the other day. Very, very limited, but she is talking. You know, she's good, doing I'm good. I'm sure she's very happy about this. Where she's overjoyed. Really? It's at the Delancey. Yeah. It's at the Delancey bar. Yeah, it starts event. earlier than normal at 7. You know what I mean? We even got a film clip of uh, this movie that's going to be coming up that her fiancé, Ed X Young, uh, made. And she's in it as a zombie. And the song from the movie is uh, sung by Susie. Nice. Cool. So we're going to have a good time tomorrow. Come on down. Have some fun. Let's party rock and roll. There you go. Susie Cream Cheese Benefit at the Delancey, thanks to Frank Lloyd. It's going to feel like you're in 1979, you said? Yeah, well, look. I mean, Low Society, Sturgis, played with John, and, and his bass player played with John Cale. Dirty and Naughty, G Gas Wild, who used to be in The Pretenders. The Hudson Dusters, Wild Bill Thompson from The Senders. John Collins from The Terrors. Harley Five from The Tough Darts. Ellen Foley, you know, Teddy Barbot. Buddy Love. Buddy Love is one of the few bands that are still around from 1979 with all the original members. They're all still alive. That's awesome. <laughs> they haven't beaten the shit out of each other. How many people have you had in your bed, Joe? <laughs> no one right now. That's just five guys right let's now. Just, let's just say this year alone. Yeah. Just this year alone. Yeah. I mean, sort of the same I mean, five. These guys have been together. I don't know about 2012. People are in your world because these guys people are, that are all still alive, too. These guys have been around for 31 yeah. years. Shit, that's longer than all four of my mother's marriages combined. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? It's like, damn. It's like, yes. I was like, you got to see the video I have on Facebook of them on the Uncle Floyd show. They like, you can tell they look the same. It's just that Joey, I mean, Joey looks like that bobblehead dog. He's got a big head on a skinny body. Thank God the boy's sold out. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he looks a little like he could be Oogie's uh, cousin. <laughs> la dee da da all right, so it's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. The Delancey. The Delancey, $5. Sounds good. Do I have to dig out a skeleton? Frank Ward for president, you want, please. You want it, Frank? You want, you want it? Want a skeleton? I think he wants to tell All a right. skeleton. I've, 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 I've seen that. Every time they come out, they was going like, I went to Catholic school. I was an altar boy when it was in Latin. All right? I was like, I did, uh, let's see, I went to Catholic gra- kindergarten, grade school, high school, college. Look at these knuckles. That's, that's called nuts. That's, that's, that's Did they that's beat on nuts. you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really thought I was a good kid. Um, <laughs> anyway, but like, you know, you made good money as an altar boy in an Italian parish. They you know, at, you? Well, at weddings, you know, you had a guinea yeah. wedding. Shit, that's $50, $100 a pop. That's true. Best you think each kid made that? At, at the, the altar boys, yeah. yeah. That, now, now but them? better than that, though, was funerals. <laughs> funerals got you out of school. First you got out of school, then you hope for the long mass, not the short one, you know what I mean? Not the abridged version. You want the full <laughs> high mass on. with the requiem, with the incense, with the wine, I'd sneak a couple of pops up. You know what I mean? And then and then if you were lucky, you got asked out to the cemetery. Now once you go to the cemetery, you automatically at the party afterwards. You know, with the food and the cannolis and the Manhattan special and the soda. Right now, at a wedding, everybody knows the best man's supposed to take care of everything. He pays everybody. At a funeral, nobody knows he's supposed to take care of you. So everybody goes up, oh man, I'm this favorite uncle kid, he's a little something for you. You know what I mean? And by the time I got back to school, it would be 3 o'clock, the end of the day, I missed all the classes. You know what I mean? I got like 200 250 dollars What'd you get on your SAT, Frank Wood? <laughs> 1300 Nice. Wow. I took, I, took the SAT. I took the I took Did the SAT. Did you cheat? No. As a matter of fact, I did because I took it for somebody else. Oh my God. I, three times. Because he all states, scores all states, football, basketball, and baseball, all metropolitan baseball, junior year and senior year. He's now, he's now the general manager of the St. Louis Rams. Ooh, that team right? sucks. But without me, this motherfucker scored 700 on his fucking SAT. You get 400 for your name and address right. So I don't know. <laughs> So I took it for him three times. They threw out the 700. I got him a couple of thousand, so he got into a good school. I scored uh, 10, I so anyway, 1050. So anyway, by the time I got finished with the funeral, you know, I go back to the school, and, and I got two, 250, right? The nuns would be like, oh, that's so nice. You did the funeral. You don't have to do the written assignment. Just do the reading. You know? And then when, back when we were kids, when I was a kid back in the 60s, the nuns used to sell you chocolate. At like 10 o'clock, there was money for the mission. They give you a Nestle's bar like this for five cents. I just made two, 200 bucks. I was like, give me two boxes of chocolate. Give it to everybody. Yeah, everybody take a candy bar. Come on. <laughs> you know? I was like, I don't understand. Like, you know, today they talk about these, these schools are overcrowded and the kids ain't learning and they're bitching about 30 people in the class. I had 62 people in my fucking class. Wow. You know what I mean? And one nun. Excuses, excuses. And one nun was a ruler. You learned. So well, we all have ADD now. So how you know what I mean? So basically, but the skeleton, the, the skeleton comes down to, like, you know, I wanted a bicycle. And I was praying for a bicycle. I was praying for the bicycle. And the priest was like, Frankie, you've been praying a lot lately, which is, what's, what's up? Somebody's sick or nothing? I'm like, no, I need a bicycle. He goes, come on, you know God don't work like that. I said, you know, you're right. So I went out, and I stole a bicycle, and I went to confession. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of bike did you get? A good one. Uh, have some cheese souffle. Frank Wood. All right, Frankie Wood, the one and only. Yes.